Hello. Yes, um, hello. Robert speaking. Hello. Yes. Hello, Robert. Caleb McIntosh here. Just left a voice Um Yes. Thank. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, um, I'm, I'm curious about the teachings of the church, um, and I was wondering if it's possible to help. I, I spoke to you um, a couple of weeks ago. Is, is it the research you do, Robert? Yes, yes. I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't realise I'd spoken to you all, uh, all, 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 already, so I won't speak to you again, and I don't want to waste your time. But I'm still looking into the teaching of the church, and quite, quite shocked, really, at... Um, uh, it's concerning the oneness doctrine. Uh, yeah, so what is your interest? Uh, you say you, you research it. So what, what, is your, uh, what is your interest as such? Um, well, I believe in God myself, but I don't attend any particular church. I live in Plymouth and quite limited right, yeah. in the number of churches here. Um, but I, I have been told. Sorry, which church are you? Because I've been phoning quite a few. Which? Yeah, I'll... I'll, I'll... Your Bible, Bible way, way, aren't you? Your Bible way? Yes, I am, yes. So, so I, I just want to get to the, get to the, um, the, the core of your interest. I, if you're attending, you're a Christian, you want to... I don't to attend your... any Christian church. I don't okay, go anywhere. So, so what, and the objective of this investigation is, is what, Robert? Well, I'm curious about your position on the sun. I thought that Bible Way claimed that the sun came into existence at Bethlehem, but I've been told by two Bible Way ministers that the sun is an eternal sun, which seems to be the Trinitarian position. Okay, who, who in Bible Way have you spoken to? I've spoken to a few. Um, one of them, I would have to go back and look at my notes, one of them was a bishop. Yeah, that's uh, Um I mean, I, I'm just staggered. I, I, I thought the sun came into existence at Bethlehem in your belief, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, but, well, Robert, if, if it's not for salvation, if you're not going to attend the church... Well, I, um, what, I can't. There's, what, there's no church near me. There's, <laughs> the nearest church is 200 miles away, so... What, in Plymouth? I, I am in Plymouth, yes. Right. Um, but Many of the churches Plymouth. here... Many of the churches yeah. here that are Trinitarian churches, yeah. I won't have anything to do with them because they tell me either that there's three gods, who's three spirits, three separate spirits or three separate persons, mm. or they tell me that Jesus is God the Father. I get the opinion they're just making it all up as they go along. They don't really seem to know who Jesus is. Yeah, but the core of salvation is to have a personal experience with Christ and some of the debate obviously becomes almost irrelevant. The first part is salvation and experience with Christ and fellowship with him. That's the core. Whether you live in Plymouth or you live in the Isle of Man, it doesn't matter where you live. If you have um, that core experience with Christ being born again, um, because at the end of the day, that's what is more important than our theolog theological perspective may, may be forever. It's human reasoning part of it. And sometimes never the twain will meet. Um, but I'm confused. I mean, everyone claims to have a personal experience of Jesus, even the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons. This is the problem. Everyone's got a personal experience with Jesus, and everybody's Jesus is different. I need to well, figure that out, because they will say, we believe in Jesus, we're the true church, but... Their, their Jesus is different to the Jesus of the other churches. Well, but obviously, if you look at Mormonism and, and, and the Jehovah's Witnesses and just study their history, you, it comes out of somebody's mind. It evolves out of, out, out of erroneous, erroneous beliefs. That's pretty clear. So uh, whatever, whatever, whatever their modern position is, you, 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 you just have to do some basic research in, in, in the evolution of, the, of their theological ideas and, and so on. Um, now, the issue about uh, Jesus and, and, and his being, being the Son of God, um, um, the, the, the Catholic Anglican tradition uh, is rooted in an understanding of, 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 um, of the Trinity that evolved in the third and fourth century. Um, but the original disciples of Jesus never embraced that. They never taught it. 
uh, and neither do they argue about the theosophical ideas. That so you're that saying it's wrong? So you're saying the Trinity is wrong? What I am saying is this. It's an, what I am saying about the dominant belief of the Trinity, which if, 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 it, if, and you have a plethora, you have a whole, you know, spectrum, you can have those who uh, are from one end believe in tritheism with in tritheism, they'll see three on the throne, three gods, three separate entities. That's what I've and just told I'm, you. That's what I've just told you. I've come across this all the time so that's in one, Trinitarian that's one, churches. Yeah, that is one spectrum. It's a spectrum, unfortunately. The one extreme end is, is, is tritheism. It's not really trinity. It's tritheism. Yes? Uh, that, the other ex, that, that's one extreme. The other, the other element is, is that one has to understand that, yes, Trinitarian doctrine is an evolution. Um, uh, for the early church, never taught that. Um, it's an evolution that's wrapped up in uh, theosophical ideas emerging in the second and third century. Uh, so uh, what, did, what did the Christian church believe prior to that, prior to the But conversion? everybody's beliefs evolved, including oneness beliefs. Everyone's beliefs evolved. To, to simply say that we are, we have the Bible truth, and you no, know, I, 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 I and that. our beliefs I'm haven't saying. evolved is not honest. Every belief, no, Jehovah's Witnesses, Trinity, oneness, point, everybody's beliefs saying, evolved. The point, the point I'm, I'm trying to make is, at the end of the day, we could, as I said, go on forever about it. Yeah, and you are going to have, find different nuances in 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 presentation and so on. You're not, if, you're not, if you don't go to the extreme of being a tritheist, then you've got to embrace uh, the, the various uh, shades of meaning and interpretation, um, um, but, but hold to, to, to an apostolic, by apostolic I mean uh, an early church understanding that Jesus uh, uh, is, is the full and total manifestation of God as called to Paul in Colossians. And that in him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead. Right, right. Hang on. Now that's Colossians one. That's Colossians two nine. Yes. Colossians two nine. Yes. Yes. Colossians two. That in him. Yes. In, without controversy, in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead body. Is that the that's Godhead. Colossians two nine, isn't it? Two nine. Yes. Yeah. But what? What? So, so, so we could we 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 could we could feel our giants forever. We could. Could but, go on to the that's, that's, that's a Pauline's view of it. That the fullness of the Godhead. Right. The, Godhead, the, right, Godhead, can I, the Father, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes? That's what a Godhead is. Yes? So you're... <laughs> in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Oh, what is, bodily. What, so what, what is the fullness? What, what is the element of the Godhead? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes? All, all understanding of that is all embodied in Jesus Christ. Could I just comment? Yeah, go ahead and comment, yeah. Yeah. Um, from my understanding, the Father is the fullness of... Godhead simply means divinity, or deity, divinity. So the Father is the fullness of the divinity, but the Son is the fullness of divinity in a bodily form, because it was the Father who sent the Son into the world. John sixteen twenty eight <laughs> talks about the Father sending the Son into the world. And 1 John chapter 3, verse 8 says, For this reason, the Son of God was manifested. So it's the Son who was manifested, not the Father. Now, as I understand it, the oneness position on Colossians 2.9, unless I'm mistaken, is that they say, For in him, and the him is the Son or the flesh, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead, that's the Father, bodily. So they see the sun as a, like a bottle, an empty bottle of flesh. And I, into that bottle you pour the divinity, that's the Father. So when you quote I, this I, verse, you're really denying the divinity of the sun. You're saying only the Father is God or Godhead. Um, look, I don't know. We, th 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 that is whatever other expression and uh, exegesis that is applied to that verse, I can't, I, I, I can't comment. What I am saying direct perspective of the text that Paul writes, uh, being, being a pharisaical Jew, understanding from the Damascus Road in Acts 9, that, and he says, who art, thou, who, art thou, who art thou, Lord, speaking in the Hebrew tongue, who art thou, Yahweh, who are you? And he says, I am Jesus. 
Pauline's, Pauline's revelation and understanding of God is, is, not, is, is, is pretty straightforward. He knew, that, he knew that there was only one God. Um, being, a, being, being a trained um, um, scholars of Gamaliel, he understood the Hebrew text clearly. That's why he was persecuted as a Christian, because they were claiming that Jesus was Messiah, that he was God, he was divine. When you say Jesus, do you mean Father or do you mean Son? No, no, I'm, 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 I'm saying Jesus. I'm not, I'm not, that's, well, that's at Acts 9, Acts 9, 5, it does say Jesus, who are you, Lord? And he says, I am Jesus, who you're persecuting, yeah, Acts yeah, 9, yeah, 5. But who but, are you, Lord? But, but the first part, the first part of the inquiry is who are you, Lord? Yeah. Paul, Paul's, Paul's uh, understanding of the Hebrew text is who are you, Lord? Why are you mm-hmm. Jehovah? Who are you, Yahweh? Whichever, whichever, whichever uh, Old Testament descriptive and, yeah. and uh, that, that is that is that is who he's addressing, the one God in heaven. Yeah, yeah, and, and everything, all of his theology. Is, is, is predicated on Is that on the his Father, level. or is no, that no, the Father and Son and Holy Spirit? This is why I'm, I am confused. No, no, that's where you, you need not be, because neither was Paul. His, his, his challenge to the Christian church was their understanding of who Jesus was. When you say Jesus, yeah? are you talking about the Father, or are you talking about the Son? No, I'm talk- I'm, I'm, am I talking about who? Are you talking about the Father, or are you talking about the Son? I'm talking about God. Right. Who is God? Is God Father or is God Son? Here we are again. This is, that's what I'm saying. If you project a tritheistic concept... No, I'm, I'm, I'm not actually projecting anything. I'm asking a question. For instance, in Colossians... T- t- in, if you go back to Colossians 2.9, for in him... I want to finish the text in, 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 I want to finish the text in, in, in Acts. Because we... we, we, we yeah, but if you say Jesus, you're not actually even attempting to answer my question, because Jesus no, in no, oneness you, I, can I, be the I, Father I, I, or the Son or the Holy Spirit. So you can say Jesus is this or Jesus is that, and you're not actually telling me anything. I need well, to know no, but, who you're talking but, about. Are you talking about the Father specifically, or are you talking about the Son? For instance, I said, uh, 1 John 3, 8, for this reason the Son of God was manifested. It was the Son, not the Father who was sent into the world by the Father and was manifested in flesh. There's no verse which says God the Father was manifested in flesh. Let me go back again. Uh, you, 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 for, for whatever, I'm going to go back to, to the Acts, Acts, Acts 9 principle, first of all, because Colossians and all the other texts, that, the, all the Pauline is, uh, theological statements about Jesus, about, about the Godhead, is based on his revelation on the Damascus Road. Yes? It's, so don't, so that's what it's based on. It, Paul's revelation and the manifestation of, of, our, of God to Paul on the Damascus Road is not, is not an answer to whether the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit, because that was not a concept that the early church had to consider. So I'm going to go back to the text. And what it says is, who are you, Lord? There's only one Lord he'll be, he'll be addressing is the Almighty God. Who are you? Yes? Who are you? And it says, I am Jesus. So for Paul, the Jehovah God of the Old Testament is Jesus Christ in the New. Simple. And everything else, Colossians and any other statement about the Godhead is predicated on that statement, that revelation he had on the Damascus. But in, but in, is it true that in your church you believe that Jesus yeah. is the Father and Jesus is also the Son and Jesus is also the Holy Spirit? I am not. You have spoken to several people and they've given you, as I've called to you, they've given you different perceptions. All I'm saying, and I'm not, I'm not going to answer yes or no. I don't know who you spoke to. I don't know what they said. Yes. Is so, Jesus the Father and the Son and the Holy Jesus. Spirit? In, in Jesus, in Jesus, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. Right. Father, how, Son, and Holy Spirit. How can Jesus indwell Jesus? I didn't say Jesus indwells Jesus. I just told you what I... You, you can twist it whichever way you well, want to. You, you, look, if you're not, for in him yeah, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, Colossians 2.9. The him is yeah. the Son. For in him, that's the Son of God, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now, 
as I understand, this verse is simply saying that the Son is Yahweh God, the fullness of deity in a bodily form, as opposed to another person, somebody else, the Father, who is the fullness of deity, who is not in a bodily form. And if you're going to be pedantic about it, the word bodily... Um, yeah, yeah is probably re rendered better in a bodily form. So in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead, and the modern text, NIV, New American Standard, says in a bodily form. So the contrast isn't... The contrast is actually... All it's saying is that Christ is the fullness of deity, bodily, walking this earth as a man, whereas, of course, the Father is the fullness of deity, who is not in a bodily form. Because remember... John 16, 28 says it was the Father who sent the Son into the world. Now, you, what I understand is the oneness view on this verse is that the him, you, you, you would see two different distinctions in this verse, the him and the Godhead. The him is the Son and the Godhead is the Father. So what you're saying is, for in him, the Son, who's not deity, dwells the fullness of the Godhead, that's the Father who is deity. It's a denial of the divinity of the Son. It's subordinationism. It's, it's pointless you calling me and then telling me what I believe. It's pointless. Then you go ahead and, and uh, if you're writing it or you're recording it, or whatever, whatever means you want it, then go and use it as you please. But don't, don't, don't then tell me what I believe. If you quote a verse to me, uh, give me the respect to explain it. I'm not, okay. I'm, not I'm not dissecting the Godhead. The fullness of Godhead is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Paul says it dwells bodily in Jesus. Well, how can you have, if Godhead means Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the hymn is the Son, how can the fullness of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, indwell the hymn? If the hymn is the Son, you have the, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit indwelling the Son. You have the Son indwelling the Son. How do you explain that? I mean, the Son indwelling. Look, let's read the verse. Read? For in him, that's the Son, no, no, no. dwells all the okay. fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you said Godhead was I, I, Father, I Son, I and you, Holy Spirit. This, 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 Robert, Robert, listen. Oh, I don't think we're going to get anywhere today. And I, I didn't pull to have a long Bible study with you. I think, uh, quite frankly, um, if it's not if it's an academic research, what you've got, you can go with. Um, if it's not a salvation pursuant, then what you have, you can you can you can you can go with. Um, uh, the plethora of explanation about the Godhead will continue up to, after you and I are gone. So uh, I hope that your research will let just, you. What just you tell me who the hymn is. Who is the hymn? Of course, I'm, uh, my dialogue is over with you. You're telling me what I believe. So I'm asking you, know, you, who is the hymn? I'm, I'm I would understand that as the sun, that the hymn is the sun, for in him the sun. Am I right? Am I right to assume the hymn is the sun? This is my conclusion with you. Yep, this is my conclusion with you. Yeah. Um, if, I hope whatever you're pursuing, you'll find it. Uh, if you already know what I believe, there's pointless me explaining it to you. Uh, I hope that your research and your endeavours will come to a, a suitable conclusion. And I bid you farewell. Okay. God bless you. Okay, bye-bye.